China's economy is collapsing, and it could happen here too. We could very well run out of money. You guys remember the Lehman Brothers, the big investment bank that crashed in the 08 recession because of subprime loans and bad financial opportunities? Yeah. So imagine that happening to the whole country. Well, that's basically what's happening to China right now. The problem is that many Chinese took out huge mortgages for properties that remain unfinished. Now, home buyers are either refusing to make payments or threatening to. Not to mention banks are freezing withdrawals so people can't get their own money out of the bank. Their national banking regulator said that a major shareholder of the Henan banks was trying to be an entrepreneur and illegally attracted money from savers and investors via online channels. Talk about making money online, right? The protests are turning violent with Chinese police harming protesters. But really, the kind of dissatisfaction and unrest that led to these bloody protests is something I'm feeling here in the U.S. too. And what about you guys? Comment down below. Are you feeling as unhappy with the way things are? Do you think Congress needs to shake it up a little bit? Maybe we need to light a fire under their seats for them to even consider a stimulus check. But tell me, what are your thoughts about the government? All right, but I can't believe what I'm reading. China's debt to GDP ratio is verging on 256% meaning the money they owe other countries is two and a half times larger than what they can pay as an economy. No wonder they're seeing this domino effect in their markets. Starting with the Evergrande implosion, where the country's biggest state-backed real estate company upped and basically shut down housing projects that people were already paying mortgages on. So far, real estate investors and protesters have logged over 325 incomplete developments across China each containing thousands of apartments. Whistleblowers have also submitted corresponding mortgage boycott letters, and about 75 of the entries are China Evergrande projects, with Chinese buyers of homes and apartments refusing to make any more mortgage payments until stalled construction on apartment complexes are completed and the economic damage has spread to the Chinese banking system. Banks froze withdrawals because no money was coming in from mortgages because people weren't paying them. Because remember, the real estate developers just basically stopped building the housing and properties these people were paying their hard-earned money for. So yeah, now the banks don't have the cash. And thousands of Chinese depositors protested the freezing of their money in rural banks in central China. What the government did was to send out police disguised in civilian clothes to break up the demonstration using violence and arrest the protesters. Is a bankruptcy of a whole country a thing? Well, we're seeing it in Sri Lanka, and we may be seeing it in this Chinese economic collapse as well. Could the U.S. be next? I mean, I can definitely see Americans just getting tired of Congress always sliding the big oil, gun investors, big pharma, and whatever corporate powers that be. I mean, where's our state bailout? Where's our next stimulus check? Come on, guys. Am I right? So, yeah, let's go back to what's happening in China. Almost $6 billion worth of deposits froze up. Thousands of police were deployed to shut down the protests. Following the protests, hundreds of thousands of Chinese home buyers refused to pay up to $300 billion worth of mortgages. Mortgage payments have reportedly stopped on 301 projects in 91 cities. China is experiencing a repeat of the 2008 recession, but on a whole new level. An entire social revolt is growing as the CCP desperately censors the growing uneasiness. They're having these secret internal government meetings within the Chinese Communist Party, and it looks like the worst is yet to come. What's worse is that this will ripple out, and the implications will ultimately affect the rest of the world, including us here in the U.S. Five banks declare bankruptcy and layoffs. Pretty soon, that'll spread into 20 banks, then 100, and eventually the entire banking system. And theirs is pretty much the same as ours in the way that your money in the banks is really just numbers on the screen. They have this bank rule called fractional reserves where they only keep a part of everybody's money easily withdrawable with their cash stash, like real estate investing, house flipping, the stock market, you name it. The rest, they think of how to invest it and make it grow as fast as possible so you won't notice your money isn't really there. In a way, you're basically cutting them a stimulus check for them to use to make more money with. Now, the problem with the system is when citizens all try to withdraw their money at once, everybody will then realize that, wait, hang on, what? Wait a minute. The banks don't actually have the money that you've deposited. That's what is happening to China and could easily happen here too. Economists worldwide know that China's recent social unrest is a signal of a complete disintegration of the Chinese economy. The mortgage boycott did not come out of nowhere either. 
It took years of mismanagement and greed to build up all the frustration that came in the form of a boycott. Because housing prices kept going up year after year, Chinese citizens were eager to purchase any property on the market. Similar to the buildup of the U.S. in 2008 in the recession, citizens could not even imagine that housing prices would ever crash. As a result of increasing housing prices, people would save up for years just to get their hands on real estate. An estimated 70 to 80 percent of Chinese households assets are tied to real estate. Now imagine saving up for decades just to finally purchase a single property. Chinese culture dictated it as well, where newer generations would prioritize purchasing a home. Such a huge buying frenzy fueled up the booming property market that continued for on for decades. Property developers capitalized and expanded to dangerous levels. Enter the pre-sale model of building real estate. The property pre-sale model was when buyers put down a deposit to start paying mortgages on unfinished houses. Yep, that's right. Home buyers were paying for mortgages for houses that weren't even built yet. And sounds crazy to us right now, but remember, they were in the middle of a housing buying frenzy, a housing bubble, some would say, and Chinese buyers just wanted to lock down real estate as easily and as early as they could. They were concerned that by the time the property would be finished, the price would have already increased substantially. So yeah, this pre-sale thing became a huge deal. And according to the Chinese National Bureau of Statistics, 34.5% of the property development income came from pre-sales. Great. So the developers had the money to build so they could then build. What's the problem, right? Well, the problem was that they didn't actually build. Instead, they just took the pre-sale income, went around and used it to sell even more pre-sale homes in a sort of a passive income type situation. So yeah, pretty much like a Ponzi scheme. And we all know how those end. The property developers would usually give a time frame that detailed exactly when the property would be finished. When the developers began failing to deliver on the timeline, home buyers lost trust in the developers and new buyers stopped fueling their money machine. Think of the new buyers as like uh, they had money printers. But either way, once a Ponzi scheme can no longer bring in new investors, the old investors cannot get paid anymore. And this is similar to what happened to the Chinese housing market. New home buyers already paid for their pre-sold houses, but the developers don't have the money to finish building them. And according to Japanese financial service company Nomura Holdings, only 60% of pre-sold homes between 2013 and 2020 were actually built. So then the protests and boycotts started. The movement would continue growing to 301 projects in 91 cities. And China has been desperately trying to censor the movement, but doing so has only made it grow even more. In fact, this video could be one of the few talking about this, so I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button so more people can see it through the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys for your support. I really do appreciate it. But we're not done here yet. Now, aside from the bad credit, the Chinese government is facing a whole lot of other problems. One story showed how protesters' health QR codes changed from green to red. Apparently, the Chinese government is making it look like these people are sick from the pandemic and aren't supposed to go out, but they're perfectly fine, perfectly healthy, and it's happening all over the country. In response to the protests, the government has decided to pay back citizens who lost up to 50,000 won or yuan, which is about $7,500 U.S., Bank deposits up to half or 500,000 yuan are supposed to be insured by the government, but that insurance doesn't cover fraudulent schemes. In the case of the banks in the Henan province, depositors were defrauded by the owner of Henan New Fortune, and Henan New Fortune allegedly defrauded the banks by illegally transferring funds and falsifying loans. Instead of lending out money to citizens, Henan New Fortune would just take the money for themselves. Because the activity was fraudulent, the, the depositors didn't qualify for government insurance. So you can imagine how international investors are reacting to this. Chinese investors are basically toxic right now and big investors are staying away. Aside from that, there are the lockdowns that are basically layoffs for workers. CCP and the Chinese president got tied up in this idea of stopping the pandemic entirely or of zero tolerance. And so you have to this one man at the top making this decision. And if he's wrong, his officials are too scared to say anything about it. So nobody can question it. Some say there's also signs that China is trying to block out foreign companies from its territory. And uh, Jeep recently closed its single factory in China after the CCP kept interfering with its, with its business. The CEO of Stellantis, which is an auto conglomerate that owns Jeep, explained how 
we have been seeing over the last few years more and more political interference in the world of business in China. And we have two big competitors, Volkswagen and GM, who are very present in China. I wouldn't want to be in their place. Even Chinese billionaires are leaving the country. Founder of Alibaba, Jack Ma, recently gave up his control of Ant Group to gain back his freedom. Now, he's having the time of his life touring Europe. Aside from him, an estimated 10,000 wealthy Chinese citizens worth $48 billion are planning to leave China this year. This means that when it comes to losing their most wealthy individuals, China is almost on the same level as Russia. I mean, can you blame them though? China isn't exactly handing out stimulus checks here. And neither is the U.S., come to think of it. Now, not only does China have too many empty houses, but their population is also shrinking. They had this one-child policy back in the day, which they turned into a two-child policy, but they're still on their way to a huge population decline. Fewer people, fewer workers, fewer investors, and fewer home buyers. The birth rate or the fertility rate in China slipped to just 1.15 in 2021, and it takes 2.1 just to maintain your population or replacement level. And this is lower than even Japan, which is also shrinking. Japan's is up to 1.3 and the U.S. and Australia are at 1.6. But we get above 2.1 because of the immigration, and China doesn't have that. If we get down to it, their population is basically shrinking by 40% with every generation. And experts point out how China is pretty much facing a demographic collapse in the next decade or so. So do you think the U.S. could be next? Drop a comment below and let me know. And we're going to talk more about this and other money updates in our next video. But for now, I hope you got all the info on China's impending economic collapse and how the U.S. could possibly be next. Now, make sure the truth gets out there. Hit that share button and let your friends and loved ones know. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss the next update. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for always lighting up that like button. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye.